Transferring shares to your children who are officially minors under 18 is a pretty awesome way to introduce them to the world of money and investments. But before you dive in, there are some important things you should know, like the tax side of things and any company rules. In today's video, we're going to break it all down so that you can feel confident that your kids are in good financial hands. Hello there, my name's Ian from Your Company Formations, where we make forming your company as easy as winning a junior school art competition with an AI-generated composition. So, transferring shares to your children, what is it and why do you do it? But before we dive in, it's important to say that this is just a guide. And whilst we do our very best to ensure the accuracy, we would always recommend speaking to a qualified advisor. Now. Now that we've got that out of the way, back to transferring shares. So let's first define what shares are. What are shares? Shares are units of ownership in a company. When you own a share in a company, you own a portion of that company. So why transfer shares to your children? Well, there's many reasons why you might want to transfer shares to your children. For example, you might want to pass on your business to your children when you retire, or you might want to give them a head start in life by providing them with an investment. Transferring shares can also be a tax efficient way of passing on wealth to your children. By transferring shares, you can sometimes avoid inheritance tax and capital gains tax. In the UK, transferring shares to minors under the age of 18 is a great way to get them interested in the world of investment and teach them about financial markets. Now, it should be noted that certain publicly traded companies outright forbid minors from owning shares, and many private companies also add rules to their founding documents to stop anyone under the age of 18 from holding shares. They do this because in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, the law says that minors can't make binding contracts, and that can obviously mess up their responsibilities as shareholders. It's a different story in Scotland, however, where anyone can enter into the contract at the age of 16. So how to transfer shares? Now that we've covered why you might want to transfer shares, let's talk about how to do it. The process of transferring shares can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. Here are the basic steps. Determine the value of the shares. Before you can transfer shares, you need to know how much they're worth. You can do this by getting a professional valuation or by using the company's share price. Decide how many shares you want to transfer. Once you know how much the shares are worth, you need to decide how many shares you want to transfer. You can transfer all of the shares or just a portion of them. It's up to you. Draft a share transfer agreement. A share transfer agreement is a legal document that outlines the terms of share transfer. It should include such details as the number of shares being transferred, the price per share, and any conditions attached to the transfer. Complete the stock transfer form, aka the J10 or the J30. The stock transfer form is a document that records the details of the share transfer. It should include information such as the name and address of the buyer and the seller, and the number of shares being transferred and the price per share. Notify the company. Once the share transfer is completed, you need to notify the company. This is usually done by sending a copy of the stock transfer form to the company's registrar. Tax implications. It's important to note that there may be tax implications when transferring shares. You should consult with a tax professional before making any decisions. In general, there are two types of tax that may apply when transferring shares. That's capital gains tax and inheritance tax. Capital gains tax is a tax on any profit made from selling an asset, in this case shares. When you transfer shares, you may be liable for capital gains tax if their value has increased since you acquired them. Inheritance tax, on the other hand, is a tax on any assets that are passed on after death. When you transfer shares, they may be subject to inheritance tax if their value exceeds certain thresholds. Now we could get into exact amounts and percentages here, but as we said before previously in the video, this is just a guide, and it's best left for a conversation with your tax advisor, or one of our friendly team, as the percentage will depend on your personal circumstances. Now of course everything here sounds super complicated. But never fear, because as always, your company formations is just a phone call away. 
we can help you with any information you need and even do the whole process for you, including necessary documentation, such as the stock transfer form, the board resolution, and the share certificate. More information can be found by visiting our website and clicking on the transfer of shares service in the additional services section. Or you can click the link in the description to read more in our blog. So what are you waiting for? Secure your family's financial future by contacting us today. Thanks for watching.